It's time for Broncos Pregame Live with Steve Atwater, Matt Boyer, and Alexis Perry. Today, Tua Tungavailoa and the Red Hot Miami Dolphins have made their way to the Mile High City as your Denver Broncos look for their second straight home win and their fourth win of the season. Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for Broncos Pre-Game Live. Coming at you from Lot J and the Mile High Monument, I'm Alexis Perry, and today I'm joined by my favorite Hall of Famer, number 27, Steve Atwater, <laughs> and, of course, Broncos TV's Matt Boyer. Like always, we have such a fun show planned for all of you here today. We'll hear from players and coaches. We'll get a live look inside the stadium. And we'll even have a little tailgate recipe that you can whip up while you're home gating here today. But first, before we get to all of that, the Broncos are coming off a really tough 37-12 loss to the Las Vegas Raiders last week. Steve, what was the tone around the team this week as they met with the media? And what does it seem like their number one priority is this well, week? Well, it looks like the guys are not, they're not defeated. They're not down and right. out. They're not uh, giving up on themselves. And they're still, they still got a great attitude about sticking together, uh, salvaging what's left of the season, and coming out playing hard. They're committed to that. So what's this number one priority for this team, this game specifically? Well, offensively, we got to <laughs> score much faster hey. than, we, than we have in the past. And defensively, I would say, just coming out and get that run under control early on, making them have to pass the ball. Well, Drew Locke, he suffered a pretty serious rib injury last week. He was in a lot of pain. He was limited Thursday and Friday in practice. We learned yesterday that he will get his eighth nod of the season here today. So, Matt, after throwing four picks last week, how important is it for Drew, Drew Locke to just get back in the saddle here today? It, it's, a, it's very important, Alexis, because the evaluation process on Drew Locke, it hasn't ended yet. This is only Locke's 13th start in his NFL career. The big question that the Broncos wanted answered by the end of this season is what do you have in Drew Locke? This is part of that evaluation process because when you think about what he's got to be able to do, you've got to be able to, as an NFL NFL starter get through these ruts that every NFL starter needs to get through. He's never faced a situation like this where he's had to flip the script. So this is all part of that process. And I think just like you need to learn how to win close games in this league, you got to learn how to flip the script. So this is a great opportunity for Locke. That is for sure. Big game for Drew Locke and this Broncos team. We will have so much more on this matchup coming up here in just a little bit. But today, this game is so much bigger than football. This is the Broncos annual salute to service game where we hope to honor the men and women who are serving or have served in the U.S. Armed Forces. So throughout this pregame show and the entire game, like I mentioned, we hope to recognize and show our sincere gratitude for all the brave men and women of the U.S. Armed Forces. So let's start things off with with this very special message. Hey everyone, I'm Matt Sarn Karpovich over here with the 28 decap in the Middle East. Just want to say hi to all my loved ones and family and friends back home and uh, go Broncos. Well, I always ask you in Broncos country to share your photos with us. We want to see how you are celebrating game day. And today we have a very special hashtag for all those who are currently serving, even reserved or veterans, to share your photos with us. So use the hashtag Broncos STS so we can honor you throughout the game. Here are a few photos that have already been sent in. Great stuff, guys. We are just getting started here on Broncos pregame live, but I can't think of a better way to really get things started than by singing along to the Broncos fight song. So here to help us do that, we have the Broncos Stampede and the Denver Broncos cheerleaders.
All right, we've got the cheerleaders. We've got the band. Now all we need is a little bit of food. How about some stuffed sweet potatoes? Sounds delicious. Alexis is outside Mile High Monument right now with our friends from Breckenridge Ridge Brewery. Alexis, take it away. Thanks so much, Matt. I am here with two of my new favorite people. Cressy, she is the certified Cicerone for Breckenridge Brewery and executive chef Kristen. You can find her at the Farmhouse Restaurant at Breckenridge Brewery in Littleton, here to whip up an amazing tailgate recipe. Kristen, what are we gonna make today? Alexis, today we are making stuffed sweet potatoes. Sounds absolutely delicious, but of course we have to have the perfect beer pairing. Cressy, what goes best with a stuffed sweet potato? Yeah, so today we paired Broncos Country, which we make right down in downtown Littleton. So can't really, oh, I love that sound. So Broncos Country is a hoppy pale ale. So it's 5.7 ABV. So very light, very sessionable, kind of give you the hop aroma. Um, and it's brewed with all Colorado ingredients as well. So. The hops we get out of um, North Fork Valley, um, and then the malts and grains that we use to make this beer as well is from Monta Vista, Colorado. So um, all together, just a well-rounded, delicious Colorado drinking beer. The hop aroma. Yeah. You could smell delicious. it. Oh, yeah. it sounds amazing. Okay, Kristen, what is our very first step for our loaded sweet potato? First step would be to uh, wrap the sweet potatoes in foil. Okay. I use some oil, salt, and pepper before I put them on the grill. The grill's at about 300 degrees. Okay. And they'll probably bake for about an hour until they're soft. So what is going to go inside of these sweet potatoes? Uh, today, it's going to be some pork shoulder that has been braised in the Broncos Country beer. Oh my goodness gracious. Talk about a perfect <laughs> pairing. Okay. Um, and then uh, you can really do it however you would like, but for me, I chose white cheddar cheese, bacon bits, uh, micro cilantro, pickled onions, and jalapenos crispy onions and some green onions. It sounds and smells like everything behind me on this grill is ready to go. Am I right? You are right. Okay, let's pull it off. Okay, so pull the sweet potatoes off the grill. Yes. Just make a slit down the center. Okay. It's gonna be hot. I was gonna say that has Ooh, to be this. scorching. <laughs> These are towels. Just make a nice, hole for all your toppings. Perfect. Okay, so which goes in first? Um, I'm going to put the pulled pork in first. Okay. I um. wish you guys could smell this at home. <laughs> this smells unbelievable. All right. I do have to mention, this is an exclusive Broncos Country tailgate recipe. You guys cannot find this anywhere. But like I mentioned, the Farmhouse Restaurant at Breckenridge Brewery, amazing food. Your burgers are amazing there. Hey, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> all right. So a good amount of pulled pork. Yep. You did not go chintzy with and the pork. I did not. Okay. And then go with some white cheddar on the top. And the heat from the pork will melt the cheese. Keep it super easy. Yep. And then some bacon bits. And then jalapenos and onions. Pickled. Where can I find those? Pickled. Um, I made these. It's really just red wine vinegar sugar, salt, garlic, and then let it come to a boil, and then just add some sliced jalapenos and onions. That's easy as well. All right, and then barbecue sour cream over all of it. The glue. Agreed. To help Make everything, everything stick. stick. Pile of crispy onions, green onions. And then you eat it all in one bite. <laughs> and then some cilantro on top. That looks absolutely beautiful. You guys, thank you so much for coming out. Cheers thank you. to you, for having amazing us. recipe for having us. and a fantastic brew. All right, Broncos country, if you are more into takeout rather than making food at home, you can always check out the farmhouse at the Breckenridge Brewery, or you can head to denverbroncos.com slash taste. We've got a ton of great restaurants listed at the website, plus, your money will be going towards great organizations like Food Bank of the Rockies and the Colorado Restaurant Association Relief Fund. Again, that website is denverbroncos.com slash taste. All right, Broncos country, now let's move along to some factoids, some trivia teasers to get you set for the Miami Dolphins and the Denver Broncos. First up, did you know Broncos country? Head coach Vic Fangio is 17-8 and eight for his career as a defensive coordinator or head coach when facing a rookie quarterback. Fangio already picked up a win earlier this year against Justin Herbert. He's going to look to do the same thing against Tua Tagovailoa. 
Lin Philip Lindsay is the only player since the 1970 AFL-NFL merger with 470 rushes and zero fumbles. So if you need somebody to secure the rock, you're looking for number 30. Moving right along, Brandon McManus is tied for first in the NFL with six field goals from 50-plus yards. Arguably one of the Broncos' strongest players this year, if not the strongest. And that statistic right there tells you the, tells you why. And then finally, Noah Fant today looking for a big day. And he could have it against these Miami Dolphins linebackers. Only needs 71 yards today to reach 1,000 for his career. So only his second season, but Noah Fant slowly rising the ranks in yardage among NFL tight ends. All right, Broncos country, as you have seen today, we are rocking the Salute to Service shirts for good reason. It is our Salute to Service game. And this week's Get to Know Your Bronco, we're going to feature a guy who is very familiar and has been heavily impacted by his family's military service. The 10th Annual Salute to Service Award presented by USAA recognizes NFL players, alumni, coaches, and staff for their efforts in support of the military community. See Andrew Beck's story at NFL.com slash salute. Since joining the Broncos in 2019, fullback Andrew Beck's military outreach has spanned many organizations, including America's Gold Star Families, TAPS, and USO Denver. Last year, he personally reached out and met over 300 military families. For Beck, the military has been a key part of his life for as long as he remembers, as his father, Chris, was a colonel in the U.S. Army. After a visit to the local VA hospital in 2019, Beck decided to start a program called Beck's Bags, sending care packages to homeless veterans. Andrew Beck will showcase his nonprofit Beck's Bags during the My Cause My Cleats game in week 13. The shoe design will come from one of the entries he has received from one of the kids served by his organization. Well, the players are warming up inside Empower Field at Mile High, so let's take you inside for an exclusive look. And gentlemen, we talked at the top of the show about the Broncos starting quarterback Drew Locke, but now we have to talk about the Dolphins' new starter in Tua Tunga Vailoa, who's 3-0 in his first three starts in the NFL. He's thrown five touchdowns, zero picks. So, guys, in a small sample size like that, how have you seen Tua really impact this Dolphins' offense? Well, more than anything, he's been winning. He's come yeah. in, he's, he's 3-0 as a starter. He throws some really accurate passes, although he's not a guy who's trying to run the ball. Looks like he feels really comfortable moving around in the pocket, and that's a positive for their offense. Plus, the offensive line has been doing a good job of blocking for him. He hasn't been perfect. He throws some balls that should have been intercepted. Hopefully, we'll get a couple of those today. Uh, but so far, he's doing a pretty good job for the Dolphins. He, Steve, you mentioned it. He's an incredible game manager. That's the thing about Tua. He's not gonna. He's not gonna beat himself. So the Broncos need to do kind of what the Dolphins have been doing: is bringing pressure from odd angles, kind of confuse Tua, get him off his game a little bit. And you mentioned it. They've been running the ball extremely effectively. So a little bit like the Raiders, they've taken the ball out of their quarterback's hands, and that effective running game is giving Tua less to do, which means he can be more efficient. Okay, like you just mentioned, Tua really has avoided pressure this season. He's only faced pressure about 18% of the time, the fifth lowest in the National Football League. So, Steve, is that the key for this Broncos defense, or is there another key to success against Tua? Well, I think it would help because mostly all quarterbacks, if you bring pressure on them, they're, they're going to be less active because, they, you know, they got to move out, out of the pocket quicker, and those pressures are designed to make the quarterbacks have to get rid of the ball sooner. Right. That means that your cornerbacks and safeties and linebacks have to do a great job of covering those receivers and tight ends, though. But, yeah, I would like to see a little bit more pressure. I'm not sure if that's in Fangio's DNA to just pressure constantly, right. but I would like to see more of it today. It's got to be the run for me, Steve. you got to be able to stop the run. Everything flows from stopping the run for this Broncos right. defense, and Deshaun Williams, Sylvester Williams, so Marcus Walker, those guys in the interior have to step up because Salvin Ahmed has the ability oh, yeah. to run. I mean, the, he's not a household name right now, right. but the Dolphins have picked up major yardages, major yardage totals the past couple of games. And Matt Breida's playing today as well. Yep. Well, speaking of the defense, you guys, the Dolphins have two shutdown corners, yeah. and they are a top five team yeah. on third downs. Darn it! <laughs> that is not what I want to hear at all. So how does this young Broncos defense really overcome this really tough, stout Dolphins team? Yeah, well, I think, first of all, we, we have to have our confidence down on the offense that we can run the ball on these guys. Yes. And that starts with the interior offensive line. If Lloyd Cushenberry plays well, 
Graham Glasgow plays well, and whoever the right tackle is, whether it's DeMar Dotson or whoever, if they come out and play well, I think we have a good chance of establishing the run game, which I think can open up the pass. Don't panic. That's the thing for me. Don't, don't, you just mentioned it. It's going to be scary, but yeah. don't panic because there's going to be a lot of looks that this Broncos offense hasn't seen yet. So Lloyd Cushenberry, pre-snap for me is going to be the key to this game because yes. if Drew Locke and Lloyd Cushenberry are able to identify certain schemes, they can shift protection. They know what's coming. They have a little bit more, a little bit more readiness than, they, than we've seen in recent weeks. So pre-snap for me, that's where it all begins for this Broncos offense. And then we got to see Drew Locke just step up in the pocket. There you go. Right. Dive, Drop dime. And we got when we step up in the pocket, we can't have somebody in the face. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Especially today, dealing with those rib injuries, you guys, that offensive line has to protect him. There's no doubt that this is going to be a challenging matchup against the Dolphins today. And as we look at some of the series notes, you guys, the Dolphins have proven to be a really tough opponent for the Broncos since their first meeting back in 1966. Since then, these teams have gone head-to-head -head 19 times, and the Broncos hold a 6-12-1 record against the Finns, but a 5-4-1 record here in the Mile High City. The last time the Broncos beat the Dolphins was here in Denver back in 2014. Peyton Manning threw for four touchdowns and not a single pick and grew to a 39-36 win. We need I that today. It, I was going to say, I think it'd be really nice to see Drew Locke throw four touchdowns all to Jerry Judy, right, Matt? Yeah, we're going to take that 257, four TDs, no INTs, and just slide it right into Drew Locke's box. Score for today, as we look at Drew, as we look at uh, the matchup, the rookie matchups for the Bronco, for the Broncos and the Dolphins today. Jerry Judy obviously going to be a key factor for the Broncos, the leading receiver in back-to-back -back games for Denver. And then two, we mentioned the lack of turnovers. That big zero needs to turn into one or two for the Broncos in order for them to have success. Throw two off his game, but all eyes are going to be on the two former Alabama Crimson Tide teammates today. Love that matchup for sure. Steve, like I mentioned earlier, Dolphins have a couple of shut down corners, but the Broncos have quite a pair as well. And it seems like Bryce Callahan is putting together a Pro Bowl worthy season. Yes, uh, Coach Fangio mentioned it. He thinks Bryce Callahan is having a Pro Bowl type year, and I agree with him doing a really great job of covering not only on the outside, but also when he gets in the slot. Uh, 35 tackles on the year, two interceptions, five pass breakups. This guy is a number one corner all day long. Xavier Howard for the Miami Dolphins is having a really nice season as well. 25 tackles, five interceptions, which is second in the NFL right now, and uh, also 10 pass breakups for him. So they have a really solid defense over there. We got a solid one as well. Yes, Bryce Callahan, the second best corner in all of the NFL, according to Pro Football Focus in 2020 so far. Hoping to see another stellar showing from him and this Broncos defense up against Tua Tungabailoa. But speaking of Tua and the fence, head coach Vic Fangio, Drew Locke, and Bradley Chubb met with the media this week to share what they think about this new look Miami Dolphins team and what it's going to take to take them down. Uh, they, you know, they obviously had a major overhaul in the last year and a half from a personnel standpoint. They found their identity on defense. They have a good secondary, good corners, and which allows them to uh, be aggressive up front. And I think uh, Brian and his coaching staff have done a good job of bringing this team along. And they run a very efficient offense. They've really excelled in the kicking game. It's played a big part in a lot of their wins and uh, we're gonna have to have our best game in special teams this week. The Dolphins are the Dolphins and we're the Broncos. Um, they run a different offense than we do. They run a different defense than they, we do. They have a different quarterback, different offensive line, different wide receivers. So the um, only thing you really take from them is that they score more points than the other teams do and we're not doing that. Um, whether that's you know what they do or how they do it, that's up to them. But my focus is the Broncos right now and not the Dolphins. Two has been uh, lights out his first three games, three and zero, and it's been been fun to see, like you know, come, him coming from Alabama and him having such a good story and him doing well now. So I feel like our preparation hasn't changed. We just got to go out there and, and look at him at, like any other quarterback and um, and try to disrupt him as much as we can as a front seven and uh, try to get hands on the balls in, in the back five as much as we can. I mean, the back four. Well, it is time now for another special moment put together by our staff here at Empower Field at Mile High each year. It's a memorial for those soldiers who were prisoners of war and those who are still missing in action. From World War II to this day, over 83,000 American men and women remain missing in action. This memorial is a reminder that America's POWs and MIAs have not and will not ever be forgotten. Well, the newest
newest branch of the U.S. military is the U.S. Space Command, who celebrated their first birthday just a couple of weeks ago. Space Command is currently headquartered at Peterson Air Force Base right here in Colorado, and they have a very special message for Broncos country. I'm General Jim Dickinson, Commander, United States Space Command. Today, we are ready for some football between two great teams. On behalf of the United States Space Command, team of space warfighters deployed around the world protecting our nation, thank you for honoring our military. As we enjoy some football today, please remember all of our great service members, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Space Force, and Coast Guard, serving around the world, defending our freedom, along with their remarkable families here at home all great Americans. I'm Master Gunnery Sergeant Scott Stalker, Command Senior Enlisted Leader, United States Space Command. Be assured, with our dedication, professionalism, and leadership, your U.S. Space Command warfighters consistently deliver space superiority. However you're streaming the game today, remember to look up and know we're always on watch, ensuring the protection and defense of our space capabilities. Each week, not just on this special day, USAA presents a salute to service moment honoring a Broncos fan actively serving our country in the military. Today, we honor Hospital Corpsman Second Class Amelia Robinson. Corpsman Robinson was born in Cuba and raised on the beautiful island of Puerto Rico. She joined the Navy in 2008 as an electrician's mate and was initially assigned to the aircraft carrier USS Dwight D. Eisenhower, deploying twice during Operation Enduring Freedom. During that time, she performed maintenance on generators, power distribution switchboards, and other electrical equipment to maintain the ship in optimal condition. She later became a hospital corpsman, now providing top medical care to hundreds of, sa of sailors. Excuse me. During these 12 years, Petty Officer Robinson has proudly served our country. She is currently assigned as a Navy recruiter serving in Denver, Colorado. Hi Broncos fans, this is Betty Officer Robinson with the United States Navy here with Antac Rocky Mountain in downtown Denver. My shout out goes to all the essential personnel working hard to keep us safe during this difficult time. God bless America and go Broncos! Go Broncos indeed. Some other Bronco fans here locally with us today, of course, our Denver Broncos cheerleaders. And here they are with a performance sponsored by Antoine Duche, Salon and Day Spas. Now what we gonna do right here is settle the score. Look around you. We got a whole room full of monsters. We gonna shut it down like this. Let's go. Ladies, all right, guys, earlier in the show, you heard some of our takes on today's matchup. But now let's send it over to my good friends from KOA, Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright, to learn what has their interest peaked around this matchup. All right, Benjamin, let's go ahead and talk about what the Dolphins are going to be trying to show the Broncos. And let's start on the Dolphins defensive side of the ball. They have some really talented players. It starts with Emmanuel Ogba, who's been just having a fantastic year so far. Tons of pressures, tons of sacks. And I mean, you know, you're thinking about like what the Broncos have been struggling with. It's been those guys in the interior that are getting so much pressure and especially the way that all the different looks they like to bring up front. What do you see about that matchup? Well, the Dolphins run a man defense. They love to sugar the A-gaps and, uh, and and disguise what it is that they're doing when they bring five or six, try to make it as difficult on you as possible. Um, they're very good at it. They're very good at getting after the quarterback. They're fast defense. Um, you know, it's it's going to be a tough matchup. Really is going to be a tough matchup. This might be the toughest defense they played all year, and, it, and they've got some good defenses under the belt. You know, they played Pittsburgh, uh, so and they they played Tampa. So you 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 look at this team and you say, okay, how can we beat them? Go back and look at the blueprint of teams that have beat them, and it's um, you know it's it's a tough matchup. 
Uh, you're going to have to get more protection than you're getting out of your line, whether that means you go max protect, whether that means you're keeping a guy in, whatever it is. Uh, but you're going to have to buy time for your quarterback, whomever that may be, uh, to get there and, and, and make sure they can get the ball out. Right. And so that's the thing is you're going to have to make quick decisions if you're the Broncos and you're going to have to be able to be decisive because it's not just the pressure they bring and the different looks, but they might have one of the best corner combinations in Xavier Howard and Byron Jones in the league. Yeah, they, they match up really well. They can play man. They can play zone. Um, both those guys are, are are pretty versatile. They're good. They're good at ball hawking too. They they keep their eyes back on the quarterback. Just got that veteran savvy. Um, th- this is a team that that I feel like is just really starting to come together. Brian Flores is a great coach. He uh, he actually interviewed here in the Denver uh, with the Denver Broncos before the uh, taking the Miami job. But he's uh, you know he's a bright young mind in the NFL. What he's done with this this Miami Dolphins team is uh, nothing short of amazing. Yeah, they've been getting a lot of turnovers. Uh, they are very opportunistic let's switch over to the offensive side of the ball and to a tongue of I love well I mean what can you say he had the fumble on his very first play uh, but since then no interceptions he's got five passing touchdowns um, you know the, the numbers aren't eye-popping right I mean overall the numbers are not eye-popping but he's playing to this they're, they're playing to his strengths and he's playing to the strengths of the team because they have such good defense and special teams they got 30 points no turnovers each of the last three road games uh, there's only one other team in the NFL that's done that four road games that's the 2010 New England Patriots so what they're doing right now is, is pretty historic. They're not scoring at the same clip that they were with Ryan Fitzpatrick, and everybody's been wowed by the two attack Viola thing, but uh, the reality is they were scoring more with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Just defense and special teams have stepped up as well. They're a three-phase team. They're complete all the way through. They play complimentary football, and you know, i got to be honest, uh, we're out there trying to beat them, but the Broncos might want to be taking notes too. Uh, absolutely. And one of the things that I am very impressed with, you know, they've got, I think, four new starters on the offensive line this year. They only had one carryover guy out there and uh, including a new center. So you're right. You know, you sort of take notes to keeping an eye on that. Saying, I'm not saying that the Broncos need to reset an offensive line, but I am saying that the what what they did is they basically said, OK, we're investing in this quarterback. We're going to have to invest in an offensive line. We're going to have to make sure we we kind of build it from the ground up. And I think they've done that. They really have. Um, they, you know, they stripped that team all the way down. Same way kind of the Cleveland Browns did with, uh, with stripping the team all the way down, knowing they were going to have a bad season. But, um, you know, good coaching kept that team fighting last year. They were competitive late in the season. You know, even though they were shorthanded, they come out this year, continue to build on it. They've got the right personnel. Um, they're just, they're a tough matchup. And, and Miami's, what, 12-5-1, and one, I think, uh, all time against Denver, which is the lowest uh, winning percentage the Broncos have against any NFL football team. So it'd be nice to kind of maybe chip away at that in this game. Now the super hot, they've got five straight wins and we'll see if the Broncos can get one today. We'll send it right back to you guys. Thanks so much, gentlemen. You guys can catch Ryan and Benjamin every weeknight on Broncos Country tonight from 7 to 11 on KOA Radio, 8.50 a.m. And we will give you a sampling of their show Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evenings on KTVD Channel 20 right here in Denver at 6.30 p.m. Well, with the ongoing coronavirus pandemic and the recent spike in cases here in Denver and Colorado and all across our country, we rely heavily on many of you to continue to go out and do your job. So we just want to thank each and every one of you frontline heroes in our community. But speaking of frontline heroes, we're so excited to be able to honor one here today. Today, we are like we are honored to. We are honored to honor Specialist Joe England of the 1st Battalion, 157th Infantry Regiment. Specialist England volunteered for Operation COVID-19 Response with the Colorado National Guard and was responsible for providing food distribution and general support for Denver area homeless shelters. On April 13th, Specialist England observed a shelter guest showing clear signs of choking, and it was Specialist England who ultimately stepped in and saved this man's life. For exceptional admiral service during Operation COVID-19 Response, Response, Specialist England's exemplary performance and quick life-saving measures that set the highest example of professionalism for all of those serving on the task force and in the Colorado Infantry. Her actions positively respect, reflect excuse me, the values and service held by the Rifle Battalion, the Colorado Army National Guard, and the United States Army. Well, teachers are also hometown heroes, and Delta Dental of Colorado is looking for some of the best of the best with their Touchdown for Teachers campaign. Touchdown for Teachers recognizes local educators for outstanding service to their schools and communities. Nominations will be accepted up until Tuesday, December 1st, and can be submitted online at denverbroncos.com slash teachers. So help give a mile-high salute to the teachers making extraordinary efforts to educate, inspire, and encourage students in Broncos country. Matt? 
All right, Broncos country, as you know, we love honoring our Bronco legends. And so today we are honoring another Broncos legend, Orlando Franklin. Out of the 20, out of the 2011 NFL draft, Orlando was born in Jamaica. And after attending the University of Miami, played with the Broncos from 2011 to 2014. Only missed one game during that time while helping lead the team to Super Bowl 48. He played three more seasons in the NFL after that. And after retiring from football, Franklin remained in Colorado. Who wouldn't? Can't blame the guy. And stayed connected with the Broncos. He has participated in recent military tours to Germany and Italy with the Denver Broncos cheerleaders. And he is standing by with our own Broncos legend, Steve Atwater. Well, hey, thanks for taking the time to be with me for the interview today. Really appreciate you. Uh, first off, this Broncos-Dolphins game, it's our salute to service game. And... You've been overseas twice for military tours in Italy and Germany with the Broncos. What was that experience like for you? Amazing. You know, to be honest with you, I think it's very important for me to go on those tours. And a lot of it is because when I was getting ready to finish up high school, it's either I'm getting a trade or I'm going to go join the Army. I go on these tours each and every year because I try to give a little piece of myself where it's saying just thank you. You know, thank yeah. Because I could have been in that situation. Right. Now, you took it to another level when you let a military dog bite your arm. Tell me a little bit about that experience with the, with the uh, military dog and why you decided to do that. Well, it's just so cool and unique. We went to one of the bases that had all the different canines. Put the arm thing on, and, and I was terrified at the same because when you put the arm thing on, it covers up your elbow, it covers up your forearm and all that, but right where you're holding it on the inside, you could see it. And yeah. when dog bites me and I'm holding him, like he's literally a couple inches away from my, from my <laughs> finger. I'm just, okay, okay, okay. And then finally, I just was like, let me get out of this thing. <laughs> uh, let me ask you a few questions about the Broncos. First off, offensively, what have you seen and what would you like to see going forward, especially from that offensive line? Just out of the offensive line, I haven't really seen them get comfortable within a scheme, within a system. You know, it's a lot of grab bag. It, it changes from week to week. Mm -hmm. But when it's offense in the run game, one week it's we're going to go to the stutter scheme. So we're pulling a guard and we're blocking down. And then the following week, we're a double scheme. And okay, everybody's double teaming. And then the following week, we're a zone scheme. So it's it's been really all over the place where, for me, I just know – in 2014, me and Ryan Clady, we didn't say a word to each other while we were on the field. And a lot of that was because I knew what he was thinking. He knew what I was thinking. But we had took a million reps together in that that he knew how, exactly how I was going to step every single time. Now, on that offensive line, I know some guys aren't playing well. Some guys are playing well. Who, in your opinion, is playing well on that offensive line right now? Well, I tell you, GB. I know, right? <laughs> he's zoned. <laughs> you know, that kid, though, super proud of him because at the end of the day, I don't know if I would have been able to deal with the adversity that I seen him go have to deal with, you know, being booed at, at during games and, you know, the holding calls. And it almost seems like the refs are looking to throw a flag on him. Dalton Reisner started to pick his game up again. You know, at, at the start of the year, it didn't look like Reisner of last year. I was wondering, hey, are you dinged up or what's going on? But it didn't look like it looked for the whole, all the 16 games in year one. Um, Lloyd Cushenberry, I'm excited about him. You know, I think we got our center of the future. You see the rookie mistakes, but he is a rookie. He did not have an off season, but you see how vocal he is. He's, he does a really good job of giving everybody on the same page. Glasgow, we're gonna need more consistency out of Glasgow, mm -hmm. just because of the, the dollar that you're getting paid, you know, at the end of the day. I get it, it's a new system. I get that you've been in and out of the lineup, but. We're going to need some more consistency out of him because he's going to be your Swiss Army knife at the end of the day. Yes, I agree, man. Hey, well, great stuff. I'm not going to keep you any longer. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day. Uh, you heard it here. Uh, Orlando Franklin, thank you so much. And uh, continue to stay safe. And, and as always, give your family uh, my best wishes. Thanks a lot, Steve, for reaching out to me. This was really fun. Any other time you need me, let me know because I love doing stuff like this. Awesome. 
Our thanks to Orlando for taking some time with us this week. Well, Broncos country, it is time to home gate for the holidays with Otterbox. Otterbox has teamed up with Coke, King Supers, 505 Southwestern, and Ozo to give fans a chance to win five fantastic home gate prize kits. Included in the prize package is an Otterbox Trooper 20 cooler, an Otterbox wireless charger, phone soap to keep your phone clean, tumblers and more along with a $50, a $50 gift card to King Supers, Coca-Cola products, 505 Southwestern chips and salsa, and Ozo plant-based protein products. It sounds great. I don't think I'm eligible. Enter to win at denverbroncos.com slash otterbox. Again, denverbroncos.com slash otterbox to start home gating for the holidays. We're going to toss things over to Alexis, who is standing by with Thunder. Well, I am so excited here to be joined by Anne and Sharon and, of course, everybody's favorite horse, Thunder. You guys, it has been so great having you out here at the Mile High Monument so far this year. But I know, if you're like me, you're really missing the fans right now. We all miss them. Sharon and I were just talking, you know, a half an hour ago about how we miss being on the field. We miss interacting with the fans and laughing. We laugh all the time. Of course, we take our job seriously, but we just laugh all the time. And I think we're missing the laughter. Yes. I know. It's been really hard this year without the fans. And now, I mean, there's been 5,700 at least here at most home games so far this year. And now this will be the last game this season with fans. So that's a huge bummer. But I know you guys are still very prevalent in the community. How are you guys going to be in the community this holiday season? Well, we've just got to adjust a little bit. Normally we have a um, party here at the stadium. He goes up on the elevator to the club level. <laughs> And then he entertains 300 kids. But, of course, we can't do that this year. So what we're going to do is we'll make up the gift bags for all the kids and we'll take them to a central place. And then they'll be distributed. So the kids will all have their gifts. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you guys so much for what you do for our Denver community. Now, Thunder, I have a really important question today. Broncos are looking for their fourth win of the season. Do you think they're going to uh, get the win here today? What do you think? Yeah, okay. Thunder said it. Broncos getting the win here today over the Dolphins. All right. Thunder feels good. The cheerleaders feel good. I think we are almost ready for kickoff. Our salute to service day continues. Let's take a look at the Broncos starting offense presented by Aero Electronics. But this time it is delivered by members of the U.S. military. I'm General Jim Dickinson, commander, United States Space Command. At running back, a fellow Colorado native, Philip Lindsay. Hua. I am Lieutenant Nola Iden with Spacecom Denver. At tackle from Utah, number 72. Garrett Bowles. Lieutenant Colonel Natalie Mock, U.S. Air Force from Spacecom at Peterson Air Force Base. At guard from Kansas State, number 66, Dalton Reisner. I am Petty Officer Edward Vandermillen from Compact Fleet Denver, United States Navy. At center from Louisiana State, number 79, Lloyd Cushenberry. Hi, I'm Jacob Harvey from Intag Rocky Mountain. Up next, we have at guard number 61, Graham Glasgow. I'm Chief Ocampo from Intag Rocky Mountain. At tackle, number 78 from Southern Mississippi, Damar Dotson. I'm Ian 2 Dylan Yates, out of NRS Arvada. At tight end, from Iowa, number 87, Noah Fan. I'm Captain Amy Swallow, United States Space Force, stationed at United States Space Command. At wide receiver from Alabama, number 10, Jerry Judy. I am Brigadier General Brooke Leonard, United States Air Force, stationed at U.S. Space Command. And at wide receiver from Utah, number 81, Tim Patrick. 
I'm OS1 Orris, NRS North Valley. Coming up next, number 35, Jeremy Cox, running back. I am FC1, Jacob Zimmerman at NRS Arvada. And at running back, from Wisconsin, number 25, Melvin Gordon! I'm Sergeant Major Eric McCray, United States Army, stationed at Peterson Air Force Base, the Commandant of U.S. Space Command. At quarterback, number three from Missouri, Drew Locke. Thank you all so much. That was absolutely amazing. We should do that every That's single right. week. But now let's check out our starters on defense presented by Aero Electronics. Here's a look at your defensive line. You got Demarcus Walker, Deshaun Williams, and Draymond Jones. Then let's take a look at the edge there. Of course, you'll see Bradley Chubb in the lineup here today. Opposite of him, Malik Reed. And then inside, Alexander Johnson and Josie Julha, who have combined for 143 tackles so far this season. Now, as we take a look at the Broncos secondary, you will see just the Iron Man, Justin Simmons, of course, making the start here today, along with Kareem Jackson as your safeties. And then A.J. Boye and Bryce Callahan will be flanking those guys here today. Matt, who are our inactives today? The guys missing Alexis, Jeff Driscoll, Tyree Cleveland, Duke Dawson, Kevin Tolliver, Joe Jones, Elijah Wilkinson, and Jake Rogers. The only real surprise there for me, Elijah Wilkinson. Coming off IR, we thought maybe there'd be a chance he was in the lineup, but obviously not back to full strength just yet, so he remains on the sidelines. Any surprises to you on the inactive list, or are these kind of the guys you expected to see today? Uh, not really, yeah. Same with Elijah Wilkinson. Just a little bit surprised that he wasn't able to make it up. Uh, and I'll be glad when he gets back. Okay, you guys, more depth there. you guys remember that for every touchdown scored here today, King Supers will make a donation of $1,000 to Denver Broncos cheerleaders, excuse me, charities, King Supers. Super's donations to Broncos Charities helps us improve lives in our community through outreach programs, including Food Bank of the Rockies. So again, that is $1,000 for every touchdown to Broncos Charities, even though I'm sure the cheerleaders would love that $1,000 for each, each game, you guys. Okay, we're getting so close to kickoff here. Any final thoughts, Matt? Don't panic. I mentioned it in the, at the top. The Broncos offense, you're going to see some weird looks. You're going to get pressure. But don't panic. Pre-snap is key for the Broncos today. Hey, Steve. Well, defensively, I think they're going to come come out and try to establish the run. we got to stop the run. I think when they're tracks, I like to see them pressure to a top tackle by lower from his left side, to our, the defense's right side. I like so that. So he has to scramble to his right and try to throw that ball. It's going to be very difficult for him. Okay, my final thought here today, I think this Broncos offense really needs to avoid three wide sets. All six. 16 of the Broncos interceptions this year have come on three wide sets. So let's just avoid that a little bit here today. Also, one final thought. I do this every single week, the shameless plug. And that is that we have so much more for you guys each and every week on our Broncos television programming every night of the week. I start things off with Broncos beat on Monday. Three beat reporters join me to discuss today's results. Then Tuesday through Thursday, our friends Ryan Edwards and Benjamin Albright bring their Broncos Country Tonight radio show on KOA 2 television and then on friday the three of us will be back to get you ready for the broncos and saints game with broncos weekend you guys can watch all three of those shows at 6 30 on ktvd channel 20 in denver and look for them on youtube at seven mountain time each and every weeknight well per usual another big thank you to the stampede thunder denver broncos cheerleaders of course miles as well for joining us out here at the mile high monument for broncos pregame live of course that is not the end of this show we are going to leave you guys with another special message of the parade of colors and an amazing anthem rendition by the air force academy's band vocal trio but truly another big sincere thank you to all the service men and women for your yes. sacrifice your dedication and your service we so appreciate you today this game is for each and every one of you thank you again for your service for matt boyer and steve atwater i'm alexis perry thank you for joining us for broncos go pre game broncos. live let's go broncos <laughs> Hello, this is Commander Marshall Metley stationed in Djibouti, Africa. I want to say hello to my friends and family in Grand Junction, Colorado. And most importantly, go Broncos! Please welcome today's color guards representing branches of the United States military and first responders around the state of Colorado. The United States Army.
the Navy, stationed at Buckley. The U.S. Air Force, Mile High Honor Guard. The United States Space Force. The United States Coast Guard. The Denver Police Department. And the Colorado Professional Firefighters.